Hi, I'm Gabriel Ryan, and I'll be presenting our paper, Fine-Grained Data Flow Tracking with Proximal Gradients. In this work, we focus on data flow analysis, which is a form of program analysis that summarizes how data flows through a program for all possible inputs. To give an example of how this works, consider the following program. It first multiplies an input x by two and then applies modulo four. If we want to summarize the data flow for this program, we can use a transition function that says all even inputs will return zero and all odd inputs will return two. In practice, we can't execute every possible input to generate a complete summary of its behavior. So data flow analysis typically uses some approximation to generate a form of this summary. Dynamic taint analysis, or DTA, is a type of data flow analysis that approximates data flow with Boolean labels to indicate the presence or absence of a data flow. Taint labels are dynamically propagated from marked sources during program execution using a set of defined propagation rules. DTA is widely used in security applications, such as exploit detection, gray box fuzzing, malware analysis, and information leak identification. So when DTA is applied to a program, we first apply a taint label to a relevant variable or memory location. When each instruction executes, the relevant taint propagation rule for that instruction is applied to determine how the taint labels propagate. After execution completes, the taint labels will indicate which program locations can be affected by changes to the taint sources. For this program, this generates a simplified data flow summary that a data flow is present from the input variable x to a return variable x2. However, DTA is limited because the Boolean uh, data flow approximation encoded in the taint labels cannot represent all possible program behaviors. This causes taint propagation errors. To see an example of how an approximation error occurs, we can consider another program with two inputs, x and k. In this program, x minus k is assigned to an intermediate variable x1, and then x minus x1 is assigned to the return variable x2. If you look at how the instructions compose, you'll see that the input variable x cancels out and does not affect the return variable x2. However, a standard taint propagation from the input x will label x2 as tainted, resulting in an overtaint propagation error. These errors occur because taint labels only contain Boolean information and cannot represent all possible program behavior. Taint system designers therefore must choose between writing more sound rules, which err on the side of propagating more, but cause more overtaint errors, or writing more precise rules, which perform more limited propagation and avoid some overtainting, but can also miss possible data flows. It's also possible to track data more finely, such as using bit level tracking, um, but this uh, only reduces errors with specific types of operations, such as bit masking, and it also increases the overhead of the taint tracking implementation. So overall, these errors uh, still occur and um, reduce the utility of DTA for security applications. So these limitations lead us to ask, is there a richer form of data flow approximation that we can use to reduce errors by conveying more information about the program? We start by observing that gradient is a popular measure of data flow in machine learning applications. Gradient is defined as the ratio of the change in function input to function output. Or alternately, if you plot a function, you can think of the gradient as the slope of the function at a given point. Either way, gradient acts like a data flow measure through a function for the current input. 
Gradient is also used in similar applications to data flow analysis. For example, gradients are used in adversarial model testing to search for error generating inputs. This is analogous to the process of searching for inputs that trigger a vulnerability in a program. In order to apply gradient as a data flow measure, we observe that gradients can be composed over operations using the chain rule. This simply means that when a series of operations are composed, their input passes to the other output, um, you can simply multiply the gradients of the individual operations together to obtain the gradient over the entire sequence. Our key idea is to propagate gradient over a program by replacing the taint labels with gradient and replacing the standard taint propagation rules with the gradient chain rule. It's important to note that this is different from NeoTaint, which was published in Oakland last year, which trains a neural network from program IO samples to predict data flow, and is also different from Taint Induce, published in NDSS 2019, which learns Taint propagation rules from program IO samples. Because gradients convey more information about data flows, they naturally avoid many errors without requiring special rules. For example, in this program where the X input is canceled out, the gradient of X1 with regard to X will be one, and the gradient of X2 with regard to X will be one minus the gradient of X1, which also cancels out and becomes zero. Therefore, the gradient of X2 with regard to X will be zero, correctly indicating that there's no data flow from X to X2. However, evaluating gradients on programs is not straightforward. Programs contain many operations that are not differentiable, meaning that they do not have a defined gradient. So just as a reminder, differentiable functions and their gradients generally look like this plot of x squared, uh, which has a gradient of negative two when x equals negative one. So in programs, many operations when plotted look more like this bitwise and. So they're discrete and they cannot be interpolated to form a smooth differentiable function. So if one attempts to evaluate the gradient at a particular point, it's unclear what the gradient even should be. To address these non-differentiable operations, we introduce a new form of gradient approximation that we call the proximal gradient. When evaluating the gradient at a point, we first sample the function in a single direction to see how changes to its input can affect, potentially affect its output. We then identify the sample that induces the largest possible change in the operation output. And we use this sample to interpolate an approximate gradient on this operation. This biases the proximal gradient to reflect the largest possible change in output which is relevant for measuring data flow. We call our approach proximal gradient analysis or PGA. We implement PGA as an LLVM sanitizer pass, which we call gradient sanitizer or GRSAN. We evaluate its accuracy in predicting data flows. To establish ground truth data flows in our evaluation, we perform a series of modifications to each input byte and record any data flow sinks that change values as a result. These indicate where data flows are certainly present in the program, since a change to the input can only change a sink when a data flow is present. We evaluate GRSAN against two widely used DTA frameworks, LibDFT, which uses Intel PIN to propagate taint over binaries, and Data Flow Sanitizer, or DFSAN, which instruments programs to propagate taint in LLVM. We test on seven open source file parsers and find that GRSAN achieves higher F1 accuracy in predicting data flows on all seven programs. PGA improves over DFSAN, the best performing DTA framework, by up to 33% and improves accuracy by 20% on average. In conclusion, we introduce proximal gradient analysis 
as a new formulation of the data flow program. We show that PGA significantly improves data flow accuracy on real world programs. To learn more about PGA and how we improve performance on other common data flow applications, please read our paper linked here or try out our public code release. Thank you for listening and please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A session.